there's a difference between just like being stylish but knowing the meaning of what style is and like that's i feel like everyone right now is like everyone is just on this mission to like be stylish my name is jeremy kirkland and this is blamo my guest this week is writer actor and stand-up comedian yasser lester Yasser and I chat his early days hustling through the LA comedy scene and his rise through the industry. He shares how his mother raised him to be charitable, how he still wants to see others do well, and how he's returning to his Georgian roots by embracing the truck lifestyle. Plus, we get his take on buying weird stuff off of Instagram. It's a wild one. Let's go. So I want to talk to you a little bit too about like, when you think about a lot of like comedians and people that have kind of come out to Hollywood and like really made it and like made a career and stuff for themselves. Most of them had it just a hair easier than what they let on where someone was like, man, it was rough. I had six months left in my trust fund and I didn't know if I was going to survive. Yeah. And you literally came out here and built a very envious career out of nothing. Well, first of all, thank you. <laughs> I had, I, you know, like I had, and I'm trying to think of what the actual amount was. And this is, like, because, like, my aunt, like, allocated the um, the amount of money that I, like, had saved. Like, and it was, like, it was, so she, you know, she was like, this is how much I'm allowing you to get each month. For, you know, it was, like, a total of, like, $3,000. And that, that, that was for everything. And then... You know, I spent fifteen hundred immediately to get an apartment. <laughs> so yeah. I was like, okay, how do I make fifteen hundred dollars last for ten years? <laughs> um, so, dog, I just like I, I mean, it's wild. You, you know, you just like take any little. I was like working at I don't know how much you know about L.A., but like I was working at like a Best Buy in West Hollywood while also working at a restaurant while also interning on robot chicken like i mean like i i've had every like how, how'd you get the internship because you, you've said this story before in other pods but yeah, just yeah. For, oh for just well, long and short of it i was working at best buy seth green came in he needed help buying video games i was like i don't work in video game department i also think video games are for losers so i don't play them he was like cool me too help me and i was like all right so I helped <laughs> him at, the, at the end he was like is there anything if you have there, is there anything you ever need from me let me know and i was like i wanna i was like let me come sweep floors or whatever for a robot chicken and then he was like cool send a resume that's how i got it um but yeah, dog, I mean, like, slept in my car for months on end. Like, I've done I've done it all. And, uh, I mean, it's it's very nice of you to say that, like, I, like, I don't know. I Even then, like, my story is terrible. And I know people who are like, I had to eat cats. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> that is a struggle. <laughs> like, <laughs> and it's funny, too, because I, I think some folks – they you get the whole sort of like holding out for a management position where I have a few buddies and they went out to LA and like, you know, they got a couple things like, you know, they they worked on a few pilots that didn't get picked up, but like there was money coming in. Right. And basically because what their idea of like success was didn't hit within the first three, three, four years, they're like, fuck this place. Like I'm out of here. Oh, interesting. I mean like I was truly at such a zero when I got here or below that like, you know, I, yeah, I'm from Georgia. So like, and especially at the time it was what, 2005, like in my, like in my head, I was like, if I can make like $50,000 a year, like I'm solid. Like, you know what I mean? Like, and mm -hmm. I, I, I'm not saying that is money shaming or money praise. It was just like to me, I was like, that was your barometer. Like, that's, that's like success. livable. Yeah. Like $50,000 mm -hmm. to me. Because that $50,000, I mean, now feels crazy in LA just because like I, it's now just a city that only worships wealth in a way that's like truly disgusting. But like, you know, in my head, it was like $50,000, like, Except for New York at the time, I was like, I, I know I can like live anywhere with that amount of money. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so that's why I was like, if I can get there, I'll be good. And then, you know, I made a little bit more than that and then a little bit more. And I was just like, oh, crap. But then like, 
And I joke with my friends, I'm like, as I started making more, L.A. became more expensive. So I kind of just like, you know, like not to say that I, I'm not like destitute. And that's not the no, no, I the joke I'm going to play. But it's like I like every time I'm like, I might not be middle class anymore. L.A. is like. <laughs> Yeah, you are. <laughs> Every single time. <laughs> Every single time. I think I'm like, oh, here we go. New tax bracket. They're like, no. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that that happened with – so like you and I basically just went to two different coasts in the sense I, I moved to New York when uh, from St. Louis in 2005 or 04, like around there. And I remember I was working at Starbucks and then American Apparel and, you know, then I uh, – uh, where did I go? I went to the Apple store and was working at the Apple store and I was doing, it's, it's funny. Cause like, as an aside, I had dated this, uh, young woman whom was super into improv, like very, very into improv. And so I, every single night, every night I would go to multiple improv shows at Magnet and UCB. And it's funny. Cause like I saw hot sauce a bunch of times like i saw yeah. you know the mansukis brothers i saw like like real improv that you're like wow this is great but then i also saw real bad improv yeah of like course. a lot of like goofballs just running past each other ending scenes and <laughs> <laughs> and it was like it was it was messed with me but like every sing, every single job i made a little bit more money and i remember um, I got this job. I was working for this record label because I moved out to New York to play music. And I was like, oh my God, I'm g-, like the starting salary is $52,000. I was like, I fucking made it. I'm crushing this like lookout world. And then, you know, you make a little more, you make a little more. And my friend and I were talking and he was quite successful. And he was like, isn't it weird? He's like that no matter how much money we make, we're still living paycheck to paycheck. And I was like, Yeah. And we both realized that like our standards of living because of everyone else that we were surrounded by, like, like I'm, I'm not rich, but I'm coffee rich. Like, right. Yeah. yeah. If you want to get a coffee, I can, anytime you want, I can go get a coffee and I can pay for my coffee and and your coffee. Like that, that's my, that's, that's what I realized was like my level of wealth, but I'm not like Tesla rich or. Right. You know, multiple Rolex collection, yeah. sort of like getting getting kickbacks from the from the distribution level rich. <laughs> but that's the thing. It's like even the people I know that are like that. First of all, let me say I'm not. But like even the people I know that are like that, like you like go to their house and it's like a two bedroom house, and you're like, dude, like my homies in Georgia, like make one tenth of what you make and have a mansion like why are we do like are our dreams this important like you know what i mean like it feels it's so crazy and again like but also it's like your standards of living do change right like you're not just getting a starbucks coffee now now you're going you know to an alfred or somewhere a little bit nicer and it's like You don't pay attention, but it's like that little $3 every day does add up. You know what I'm saying? And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, I spent an extra $100 on coffee this this year than I would have last year when I was making X, Y, and Z. So it's like there – it's two things. It's like there's been an explosion of – there's been an explosion of the wealthy and an explosion of those living in poverty. And so like the – you know, like there is like the middle class window is very small anyway now. But on top of that, it's like the little thing, you know, like every two weeks or every month being like, oh, that's a cool shirt and getting it versus like, you know, buying three outfits once a year. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's like that kind of stuff that you don't. And it's also internet shopping culture it's just like you can just like i mean the idea like instagram has gotten me so this robe i'm wearing is i was gonna say on instagram and i was like boom and i bought it and it was a little pricier than i would have spent on a robe but i i mean i'm glad i got it but it's just like stuff like that where you're like oh yeah like i'm also in a different mindset but like i also like do try to be cognizant of like 
okay, like this is the amount of money that like, and I think we should all be like this, but like, you know, like this is, this is the amount of money that like I, you know, at the time me and you, me and you, Jeremy, were both like, this is like, I've made it money. Like, Mm -hmm. let's not be, let's not be so stupid as to be like, A, think it's going to last forever. But B, it's like, there are so many people who like, are doing without and like that was us not too long ago so i don't want to be a person that's just like i don't know and it's like i'm not wearing them now but it's like you know i have a few gold chains and stuff like that but at the same time like i never want to feel like i'm a throwing money in people's faces and b that i'm buying things simply because i'm at a point that i could be you know what i mean yeah, I mean, and that that's – there's a couple of things that you're kind of touching on it and like in the sense of like one is just like a, a consumeristic culture that's right. – that also when like consumerism becomes your therapy, right? Right. The, but then the other thing is like – and this is why I'm, you know, I'm glad we're talking. What you're doing in your private life and your public life is very, um, I would say, at least pretty transparent in, in how active you are and things like – fundraising and you know raising like political awareness and like how you're moving the needle with the influence that you have um and i think like that's a lot of stuff too that some folks you have like levels of wealth into which like cool i'm just gonna give some money away and like can all of you get the fuck off my back so i can go back to air one and do my thing right, you know yeah, it's yeah. like <laughs> <laughs> but like with you the, and this is the biggest thing is like I think uh, what for a couple weeks on your stories and everything, I mean, the amount of time you were giving away. And that is the most expensive thing anyone can ever give to anyone because it's it you don't get it back. You can make right. more money. You can't right. get more time. Right. And like what where did some of that stuff come from? I, I mean, like because I feel like you you've always had this very uh, like this life of gratitude and this very charitable mindset and and how you are like really moving the needle. Yeah. Um, well, I, you know, first all credit is due to our mom, uh, and that her charitable spirit comes from our grandma and like, you know, for better or for worse, like, you know, my mom would be like, multiple times we would literally have nothing. And my mom would like see someone sitting outside of a store and like, I would see her give them like five bucks and I'd be like, now we don't have the five dollars. And she's like, (laughs) But we just bought groceries. So, you know, like, so she's just raised, you know, me and, you know, my brother Isaiah, who I was talking about, and Mm -hmm. uh, my sister Brittany. Like, she's just raised us to be those people no matter what, like, be it behind the scenes or not. I will say that for whatever, whatever range of, like, public figure I am, be it, you know, it's a some people i'm just like a twitter nobody to some people i'm like a tv guy or writer or whatever right Mm -hmm. and not to say that either of those are you know that i have a giant platform that's not what i'm insinuating what i am saying though is that like it's like you said it's like not just time but also again like i i truly try to make sure that i'm like a like i like i was just saying like that you don't forget where you come from in any regard because the moment you do i truly think you become a demon like Mm. there's just no and i've seen it happen to like best friends of mine who just like get caught up in the wealth and the you know whatever and i i would say that like if you're connected to not even you don't even like it's weird because, you know, so many people like are like, I got to be part of the community and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, yes, all that is true. But if you were connected to yourself and of yourself of the past, if you didn't come up with a hell of money, like you remember, like I dude, I remember like without getting like too, I don't know, gross about it. But it's like I remember having like full body like my body was breaking down and i was like what's happening to me and it's like i've eaten nothing but like top ramen for three weeks like i like you know it's like i'm not drinking water and i'm eating nothing but top ramen like dude me and my brother when i worked at the improv comedy club you know and like 
he you know he was uh struggling to get in the industry as a writer and it's like I, I was working there and he would come by and we would like I would steal chips from the kitchen and me and him and, and like a little thing of spinach dip and like we would split that as like our dinner like you know what I mean like it's it, it's those things that I think that if you are truly again connected to yourself in the past that it's not hard to be like I want to help other people. Then, if you have any semblance of humanity, you want to help other people. And I think the third thing is that, like, uh, you really don't see, I guess for me at least, you don't see how things can change until you get to a certain level. And you're like, oh, like, things can change. These people are refusing to change it. (laughs) Like, it's so odd. Like, you, you know, like, I've, you know, gotten to meet hella famous people. And it's like, dude, I'll say this, like, uh, you know, I work with Don Cheadle on Black Monday and I work with Andrew Rannells and Paul Shear and Regina. And they, uh, Don is like my biggest example. Like Don like flies to Africa and like, you know what I mean? Like yeah, he does a lot. Really? He does a lot. But like Andrew does a ton. Paul does a ton. Regina does a ton. And I'm like. Oh, like these are people that like saw an issue and they're like, this needs to change. Right. But for as many of those as I've met, I've met 30 who are like, I just want to have money and like, leave me alone. And I live in Bel Air. Like, I don't care about climate change. I don't like, you know what I'm saying? And like, it's hard because like, there is two sides of the coin a little bit in the sense that like, I've seen it backfire and people were like, I want to change things. And they like, try to help out, and, you know, then you get on Twitter and they're like, but you forgot to say this, <laughs> you know, and you're like, oh my God. And it's happened to me before, but it's like, take the lesson, learn it. And then like, kind of keep it moving. But like, I, I, I mean, like, again, like I, I'm, we're, we're podcasting a from I'm assuming you're on a pretty nice computer, you know, and like I'm, you know, on this link with you on a pretty nice computer and in my own office. And it's like, you know, my mom's OK. My brother and his wife are OK. My sister and her wife are OK. My girlfriend's OK. Like my friend's the dog's okay. family. The dog's OK. <laughs> like. Like, how could you not want things to be better for other people? It's so odd. It's like this, it's like the $15 an hour minimum wage thing. It is the most disgusting argument I'll play. I'm like, you don't want people to be alive? That's all it is. It's not greed. People aren't asking for anything other than to be able to live. Because $15 an hour is it's still not like you're not like yeah i think it's I'm, approximately I'm, like 32 or 33,000 a year or something like it's that it's not you know what i'm saying yeah. it's not even the 50 threshold in my head that's like that is comfortable you know what i'm yeah. saying so it's like so odd and again like i worked at mcdonald's from like 13 to 17 and like or 13 to 16 sorry and like I would have to go before school and like help set up and then go to school, then go back to McDonald's. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I, and I don't want that for other people. And like, I just think that like, and that's not even a like poverty woes me story, but it's more just like, why, how, how did we get to a place where people were so evil about this stuff? You know? And it's like, dude, like, but that's to me. And like, to kind of bring it full circle, It's like that's like the drop culture of it all a little bit, right? Is that like this idea that like the minimum wage thing is the same thing to me as like I have Yeezys and you don't. Like you know what I mean? Like it's just a giant metaphor for I have this thing and you don't have this thing and I don't want you to have this thing, you know? And it really like I I, I just can't like – you know, I'm not advocating for – because I also like, you know – I. I don't know if everyone should be making the same amount of money. There's some people where I'm like, you're objectively bad. I don't want you to have the same. I don't want you to have the same access to money that I have. (laughs) But (laughs) 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 Because who knows what you'll do with it? You know what I'm saying? But like, 
but I do also think I'm like the fact that people can't live is like so crazy. And it's like, if I can do anything in my power to change that, then I'm going to do it. Yeah. I mean, to, to restate what you're saying, cause it's like the, every sort of argument against that would someone would say was like, well, you just want communism. And with communism, you don't have innovation because everyone is just, you know, it's like, and that's not what you're saying. You're being like, no, like I want people to make money and I want people to make as much as they can but they also need to have the same desire for everyone else in the sense that like people should not be concerned about their ability to eat. Um, right. It, you know, in, if you live in the United States and you are a you know, tax paying citizen, whatever, you should know that like, okay, I, I can eat. I mean, and I think, and that's the thing too, is like you've, you've understood that. And you also, and it's interesting because even when you are, when you were talking about this and you were kind of um, talking about like other folks who didn't understand or agree with this, like replaying the conversation back in my head, you ch- actually tried to empathize with them because like that, that's like the good in you. You're still trying to be like, well, you know, maybe, you know, maybe they do kind of think that way. And, you know, may, you know, and I'm just like, damn, yeah. like this guy's a nice guy. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> I don't know, man. Did you go to church when you were younger? Of course, dog. I'm a black dude from Georgia. Are you kidding? Me? <laughs> I don't know. Of course, you got some. You got some course. Jesus in you, man. Dog. To, well, you know, our our grandfather was a preacher, and like, not that, not, not that we even like went to his church, but you know, so it's always been around grandma's religion, like religious the way all black people are religious, where it's like, you know. It's Jesus, but also it's cussing. You know what I mean? Like, but my mom was like, you know, we were very much a Wednesday Sunday church family. Yeah, my dad was a pastor. That's why I. Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And like, I, I still think, like, I'll always love church for the, the exposure to a philosophy of it. You know what I mean? Like, I personally still like I. You know, even when people talk about spirituality and like you know as an adult it's weird when someone's like are you christian i'm like it's hard because like that's the prism in which i learned so much of what i think is good in the world about love and compassion and you know again taking care of people and service to one another and like you know healing and consciousness and you know i i i think so much of it but like I also don't know, like, when I die, will I see, you know, Jesus as the true son of God? Or will I see a representation of all the good of humanity as, you know, as an avatar, if you will? Or, like, this idea that, you know, someone just was smarter than everyone else at the time and said some really dope things. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's hard to know. And I, I have that conversation with myself all the time. Like, I'm just like, there's, you know, there's a 99% chance. It was just a really smart dude who got it way ahead of everyone else. You know what I mean? But like, I also don't take that away. Like, and I'm like, if, and this is what I think with everything. If what you believe turns into good service into the world i don't care like i don't care people make fun of like scientologists and you know whoever but i'm like if if what you're saying and what you're doing is truly putting positive wavelengths into the ether then what what is the harm like again like you know someone's like i'm in a sex cult i'm like well is it a positive sex cult like is everyone okay <laughs> like <laughs> do you guys nice to each other do you buy yeah. each other groceries like yeah are you guys like you know doing canned food drives like then i then i don't care that the leader is banging all of you if you guys are all if you if everyone's okay with it and everyone's equally getting We're banged. All consenting. <laughs> yeah, everyone's consenting, and everyone's equally getting the amount of banging that they want, and they're doing good volunteer work. Then hey, whatever. But like, you know that you know religion is a tool of violence and all that stuff. Blah blah blah. Clearly bad. But like again, like I was like, I mean, like I'm wearing a necklace right now that's an anchor with a you know cross in the center of it, and like I have my grandma's birthday tattoo or my grandma's birthday tattooed on me and then 
like with a cross cross tattoo. Yeah. Yeah. Like I'm not gonna, I'm never going to pretend, you know, I still in my prayers, thank God. And like, you know, a version of your son, be it real, you know, be it a person here on earth or not, or, you know, like, again, it's just, it's how I learned it. So that's how I, that's how I carry it. Well, and I think too, I mean, that's, when you're speaking about that, it feels like even though while you're speaking about religion, you're also speaking about your family. Yeah, it's, it's you know, it, it is all one thing in the sense that like, you know, like the greater philosophy to me is that like, and there's this book called Biocentrism by uh, Dr. Robert Lanza is the guy who discovered stem cells and then he like moved into physics and his discovery, his personal discovery is like physics comes from consciousness consciousness doesn't come from physics so it's like when you realize that everything actually comes be it a benevolent thing or not but he's like everything comes from consciousness consciousness is the originator right so when i like think of like that that's how I look at my family. That's how I look at religion. It's like, you're like, oh, everything is intertwined, right? It's just like we're different. I, I want to say different threads on a quilt, but really like the best metaphor I've ever heard is like you're a drop of water in the ocean. Like, yes, you're a drop. You're your own drop, but you're part of this greater thing that is also you are you have been consumed by and you are part of like you are separate and part of this thing at the exact same time so it's pretty cool wow that i'll have to i'll have to check that out yeah i got into like a c.s lewis k-hole for a while and was like oh yeah going really deep and all that and then um i read like a grief observed and fucking like lost my mind Uh, oh really (laughs) Yeah, I mean it's a sad book. Like my, you know, my yeah. dad's health is like really, really bad right now, and I've been like oh, trying damn, to. I'm sorry. It's all right. I've been like trying to explore like grief, you know, and like yeah. like my dad was a musician a ton, spent a lot of time like playing music, and then he like basically became a pastor. But like in a weird way, like my dad was a great guy, but he was like never there because he was he was like helping the church. So like right. in my mind, I also associate like the church as a little bit of evil because the church was basically, um, that was like, that was like the office. You know what I'm saying? Right. So like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, fuck the, fuck the church. What about your family? Like, you know, <laughs> right. yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> and, um, I like was listening to all his lyrics and in this weird way, I've like started to have this like new relationship with my dad, but my dad in 1988, based on the music that he's writing and like the stuff he's talking about that like I want to have answers to it being you know 30 almost 36 in, in 2021 right. with like a three-year-old you know so it's like wow anyway it's it's I always kind of connect with folks that had the church life because there's like there's just these these this baggage but you can also see because at the end of the day like what what gives people like the most excitement is just like seeing everyone else do well. Yeah. And like, I, you know, I also, I also think it comes with age truthfully. Like I I think that like to pretend that I was like some like altruistic, like 21 year old, like isn't also completely true. Like, you know what I mean? Like I did what I did, but I wasn't like, it, it wasn't like my drive. I, you know what I mean? Like I always, that's not true. I always wanted to help, but also didn't have too many resources. But it's like, you kind of realize it's like, when you do buy another hoodie, like help people, <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like it really is it. Yeah. All of the tropes become true. Like giving is better than receiving. And like, none of it, like, again, that's why, like, to me, it's not, imp- that's why it's like, it's not important for the philosophy of it, but it's like, I think so many people would be into helping more if they knew they had guaranteed food and a guaranteed amount of money coming in each month. And again, you know what I'm saying? It's like, then you realize like, Oh, okay. Like now I have the basics covered again. What am I going to do? Buy another hoodie. Like, let me go out there and help. like, we would all just be better off. I think. Yeah. But in the meantime, retail therapy is a hell of a lot better than, snorting mounds of cocaine and yeah, painkillers all day i guess i guess <laughs> i mean, I, mean I, I hate yeah on, on that note how have you been surviving the pandemic because at least you got the dog and your girlfriend 
same as everyone. Got a Peloton, <laughs> trying to get yeah. back into shape. Like, Hell yeah, dude! That that was like you know. So a we moved. So like just to get a little bit more space, still rent and all that stuff. But like we moved and then like got a Peloton and like I kind of just like read not even read that much i like draw and like ride the peloton <laughs> that's great and that's like it and like you know try to set up little if there's any political things to be doing i do those and then that's kind of it what about you i had this thing and this is you know just good to talk about clothes and shit too is like um i went through this thing was like everything i own is just like not who I am. And, and, and it's all this consumeristic bullshit. And I, and like, I've worked in fashion for so long that like, I get a lot of stuff for free, right? which is cool, but also really sucks because at least if you're me, like someone will give you this jacket and you're like, you know what, you know, we make that jacket real sick. This other shirt. Now I got to <laughs> buy this other shirt. Next thing you know, I just spent like two grand on a bunch of shit yeah. for a free jacket, right? Had tons of clothes. And so I've been like in some weird sort of identity crisis mindset. I've been like trying to reinvent my fit all no, day. Dog, I get that. that. I, I truly. And then buying shit on eBay. Well, I've been doing that a little bit too. Like just like, but again, like all the clothes that I bought recently, I'm like, I can only buy something that was pre-owned. Like I, I really am like, I don't want any more like garbage in the world. I gave away 80% of my sneaker collection. Like I'm just like, I just don't want, like it all just started feeling like trash to me <laughs> like and uh you know because i mean like we have like our grails and then we have like you know just I, I was like look i'll have four or five pairs of just like my everydays i'll keep my grails which is still like 20 pairs you know what i'm what saying are your grails? I, don't, I don't have like i, I have like i don't want to say unique grails but it's like uh my brother got me you know uh Jordan one Royals for my birthday a few years ago. And like, those are my, those are my top, top shoe. And then like that, cause my other ones are, uh, Air Max penny ones and I don't have them yet, but like, uh, so he got me those, then, you know, like typical stuff, 11s, you know, Concord or not even Concord 11s, bread 11s. And then like, but I got like the cactus plant, um, uh, blazers when they draw, like I just little happen fuzzies. to be on. Yeah. Little fuzzies. Uh, I'm trying to think of what else is in there. Oh, you know, like wave runners and seven fifties, uh, you know, just like you know, weird stuff. But, uh, I can't even, it's so hard. Cause I, I moved them all to the other room. So like, I can't even like look at them and be like, Oh, I have this, this is this. Um, dang, I'm trying to think, Oh, it's like, you know, like, uh, bread 350s stuff like that i don't like i truly and then i'm trying to think about on the nike half oh yeah black toe jordan ones uh you know threes and all the all the all the standard fare i'm trying to think of what i have that you'd be like whoa i think the 750s are probably the one that like most people yeah. are like holy you know um which were a gift from pally actually so um what a nice guy yeah Oh, and then like, well, there's like new grails now, given that he passed. But like, I got the uh, undefeated Kobe's, the first run they did of the five. So I got the the purple and yellow Lakers ones, um, and then I had like the Protros and all that stuff. And then he passed, and now I'm like, well, yeah, I'm keeping all the, you know what I'm saying? Like, so yeah, uh, yeah. so yeah, you know, just just stuff like that. Nothing. So wait, you had? I mean, that's a that's a ton of shoes. So you had way more than that. Yeah, I mean, like, and I, I, again, like, I was nowhere near my brother, and I still had a ton. Like, it's, it, his, his place looks like a shop. <laughs> like, my, I just look like someone who had a lot of sneakers. Like, his place looks like you're like, oh, but I'm in a warehouse. <laughs> oh, um, nice. But yeah, but, uh, but anyway, yeah. Um, but yeah, I was just kind of like, all right, I gotta, I gotta be done with it. And so what, 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 what you've been like reinventing yourself then? Uh, I mean, just more like, again, like we're from Georgia. So it's, I've been wearing a lot of overalls, a lot more boots. Like I got a truck. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm like learning how to like build stuff. Like I'm like, I want to be ready, you know, 
So wait, wait, uh, wait. Ready, like post-apocalyptic. Stuff? Post-apocalypse, or if we, because like if me and Chelsea just decide to live in the woods, I want to be able to like build us something. You know what I mean? Or if like the house breaks, I can like fix it. What What um, have you been learning how to build? I like dumb stuff like a small table, or like you know what I mean, like a a a rack that is three pieces of wood, or like you know what I mean, a box. But like I want to like I want to learn how to like you know do pipe work stuff like that oh damn this is real deal stuff like because yeah. you know, we we just bought this house um because like because the economy's so fucked up it was yeah. cheaper to buy a house here than it was to rent right. a house. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course and um i'm like i have never owned a home or done any of this stuff i don't know how to do anything i'm like yeah. learning about drywall anchors plumbing i'm like like I'm, I'm getting way into it. I mean, the amount of my YouTube rabbit holes are oh, all that's these what I... like, <laughs> dude. They're all these like, here's how to change the tile in your house. And I'm like, okay, okay. And someone's like, backsplash. Let's change it. And I'm like, yeah. I'm like getting <laughs> ASMR hits <laughs> watching these so dudes funny. do a new backsplash in a kitchen. Dude, and I was like, I fuck get yeah. it, dog. Subway tile. Yeah. Why wasn't I thinking of that? That is so funny. <laughs> well. Like, and I think other people have probably pointed this out, but it's like, there, there's something so weird to me about like, and this isn't going to be like a white people do this thing. Cause like <laughs> that's boring to me too. But like white people will like love something and then one day hate it so much that you, you act as if like it never existed. So it's like Smash Mouth was, they sold like, what 20 million records that's a lot of records that's a lot yeah all star was the number one song in this country for like half a year and then it became you know all of a sudden people were just like i never liked them (laughs) and i'm like it is impossible it's impossible and here's the thing like i just feel like it's like part of the greater conversation of just like white people not owning up to bad stuff they did. Oh shit! <laughs> and like, I feel music seen. is like, yeah, music's like the microcosm of it, or like pop culture as a whole. But it's like, you know, like, and not to say that other cultures don't do it. Like black people do it too. But it's like we still enjoy a Chingy song when it comes on. We're not like rolling our eyes. We're like the song sucks, but we enjoy it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's I like, don't. You know, I don't know how to have. A healthy relationship with anything in the sense like yeah especially with music because it's so emotional and like for me um i don't know if you've ever experienced this but like certain like even like psychologically like certain things have happened in my life when i've heard certain songs so immediately right. hearing just like a, a scent immediately hearing it reminds me of abc like i never liked dave matthews band because all the dudes that listened to dave matthews band were the same dudes that called me you know, homophobic slurs when I was yeah. in You can say gay. You can say they called you gay. No. They, and worse. They, yeah, they yeah. say that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it's just like. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so, like, in my mind, I'm like, Dave Matthews Band fucking sucks. Anyone that likes that is a, is an ass clown. Da, da, da. But, yeah, uh, yeah I, I don't know how to have just the regular, like, oh, I heard that song. It was okay. Or it was it's a good song. And you can disassociate right. the person or even the fans from it. Okay, but like what when they were listening to Dave Matthews band, what were you listening to? Um Weezer and Refused. Okay. But there's also like someone who was listening to Weezer who was like beating up their spouse. You know what I mean? So it's like <laughs> you yeah. You can't like unless the musicians themselves like if Dave Matthews came out and was like, Listen to my music and then gay bash people, then it's like, <laughs> Okay, let's not do it. We should listen to him, but like he can't <laughs> control. You know what I'm saying? Like, because at my high school, all the people that live listen to Dave Matthews Band, all they talked about was like how he was from South Africa and like did like weed experiments on spiders or something. Like there was like you know in college he like gave a spider THC was, like <laughs> these, and I was like, I don't care. I don't like. I barely know who this person is. Like all I know is that the album covers like a like a merry-go-round or something if i remember correctly under the table and dreaming yeah yeah so like uh, like the rest of the stuff like that's so like it annoyed me until like 
later and I still don't like listen to them, but I'm like, oh, I get as a musician that that band is extremely talented. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. So and then the bus thing happened and like that was very funny. And like, so so like half ride for them. Is there any band or like cultural thing that you're like, this is untouchable for me no matter what happens to it? Like that I will never hate it or that I'll never like it. Both. I mean, you know, it's something I'll I'll never hate is Michael Jackson. Like you just can't. I, I was just so obsessed with him, and like, it's just it's not gonna happen for me. Like I'm sorry, I am sorry to everyone involved <laughs> <laughs> in those situations. But like, he, like it's not just like a oh, it means a lot to me. It's like he changed the world <laughs> and i'm true. not you know like and i'm not saying that to be I, i'm laughing because i sound insane but uh it's it's just there's nothing that i'll ever be able to <sighs> it's one of those things that like i understand it because if it happened to me or my family sure i would like you know bash his brains in but because it didn't I'm like, oh, well, you know, you can't control everybody all the time. Like, you know what I mean? It's like, it's sad because it's all just, you know, it's the greater, it's the greater conversation about like canceling in general that I think we need to have where it's just like we cancel things and people we don't like Mm -hmm. and then we don't cancel things and people that we do like. And that's it. There's literally no other formula to it. Like I, I like even, even like, you know, people not for the sake of argument, like, uh, Louis CK, right? Like the people who quote unquote canceled him Mm -hmm. could have taken it or leaving it anyway, left it anyway. And, or they hated him, but he wasn't making such an impact that, that they, they, didn't have those feelings already you know what i'm saying and or couldn't be influenced but as fans there's not one i don't think one true fan of his that was like gotta walk away like it just didn't happen you were ambivalent to it anyway and or i wouldn't even say ambivalent because ambivalence is like a violent like draw between two things where it's Mm -hmm. more just a casualness you know um and like it's like the same thing with like anyone it's like chris brown it's it's all of it it's like you know the chris brown thing's a little bit different in that you know there's like all these pictures and blah 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 but even then the people who were super fans that left for a second came back around you know he still goes platinum every time he puts out anything so like <laughs> this is true <laughs> you know so i i think that like the conversation needs to not just it's not just like First of all, the term canceling is so corny to me, but uh, but I don't think it's just about the canceling, quote unquote, of someone. I think it's like, what's the greater societal conversation that needs to be had about like, because there are people who aren't going to stop liking them. So what is the path forward with that? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, it's like, when they're like, we're not going to play R. Kelly on the radio in like grocery stores and stuff, which is like, I do get, you know what I'm saying? Like you can't, you can't for, I mean, it's like very much the, uh, you know, the tangible metaphor, if you will, of like forcing someone to listen to R. Kelly. And it's like, if you like R. Kelly, then listen to him in, in the car when you get outside, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, that stuff I'm fine with, you know what I'm saying? But like, if someone's like, I want to be in my car and blast R. Kelly with the windows up, then that's also just like, I think the kind of thing we have to accept. We can't, we can't say you can't listen to R. Kelly at all. Cause they're going to be like, that only breeds like weird resentment, you know? And then also like, if you do that, then they actually never come around to the thought of why someone's being hurt by it. They just know that you are telling them they can't do it. And then that, you know, that by very nature puts up a wall instead of like the education of why people are being hurt by this thing. That's 
incredibly well put. <laughs> I'm there serious. No, like as I was thinking about that more. Yeah, I mean, because there, there's a revisionist history mindset that's happening, and then also, I mean, when we were first chatting earlier, that the everything is so nostalgic and so like deeply connected to that. Like, you know, um, basically anything that was Nick at Night or like uh, or Snick. The Nickelodeon yeah, like Saturday Night oh, stuff, buddy. yeah, that stuff is untouchable to me because it is like my entire childhood. You know, I mean, thank dude, Keenan Thompson. I will, <laughs> I will stand behind him for the rest of my life. Like the uh, dude, just there you go, he's got it. And it's it's interesting too because I feel like too, and and that mindset where it's like anything that you like is also a characteristic of yourself in that sense. So if I like. I don't know, Dave Matthews or if someone else likes Dave Matthews for some reason, like that characteristic of my experience of it, I'm associating as them being someone who is um, homophobic, <laughs> like, right. which yeah. is just fucked. Uh, damn. One of the other things I want to talk to you about too is like there you've become one of the like, especially from the the tragic deaths of, of George Floyd and Ahmaud Arbery and just the countless lists of uh african-american lives that were murdered you've been a very large outspoken force on that and also for many people including other um friends of mine of, of color who really lean towards in terms of your your takes like when it's okay to laugh when it's okay to mourn when it's okay to respond in you know in an organized manner and you know, I apologize for probably the weight you might feel on your shoulders to do that. Um, but I, I'm I'm curious, like how that's affected you, or if it's just been like a second nature response. Uh, again, it's a little bit both, right? And I, I think we talked about it, you know, a little bit ago. But like, a, I just think in terms of like, you know, like what's happening right now amongst. Um, the Asian, you know, community and uh, particularly Asian elderly people being attacked. It's like, A, yes, it's like rooted in racism. B, it's rooted in, I guess, ageism to an extent. But C, it's like, I just, I just don't understand, like, I, I understand violence. I don't mean it like that. Like, there's, I, like, and not to say that they're, it's justified. But I get someone being so hungry that they have to like rob someone. Like they just feel like they have no other options. Now I don't understand them killing them or beating them up or any of that stuff. But like, you know, desperate times weirdly do call for desperate measures, and that's another thing I think we don't talk about. It's like you know, that's like the the conversation is like black on black crime or any of that stuff. It's like so much of that is just like a crime of desperation. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? People just want to survive. It's what we're talking about with like a fifteen dollar minimum wage. You know. Um, but I think just like as a responsibility to your communities, be it yours or others, it's like, don't you just want people to like live and feel okay going to a store or, you know, walk, literally walking down the street? Like, it's so crazy to me. And like, in terms of like the weight of it or like assuming a position that's not, A, that's not my purpose with it because i think that anyone who assumes themselves to be a leader in something like this of, of like a magnitude uh, something of this magnitude is probably a sociopath that's why i'm like anytime someone's like running for president i'm like i mean i guess i'll vote for whoever but like <laughs> it's weird that you want to be president you know um so to me it's just about like at the end of the day like I try to a like I you know like and this isn't on like some ultra woke stuff but it's like I have trans friends I have Asian friends uh, mm -hmm. you know my sister is gay I have you know uh, Latin X friends I have Indian best friends and Persian friends and like I'm Jewish friends like every I'm I'm literally friends with every kind of person that is out there you know what I mean. <laughs> Yeah, And because of that, 
it's like you see how things affect people you know what i'm saying outside of just you know being a black person from georgia and you know being raised by a single black mom and like you know those are those are the things that define me the most of course but like it's crazy to not empathize with people and things and you know what i mean so like for me it's like i you know at the end of the day like i would just rather me if it means that me speaking out against something or volunteering time or whatever will make one of the homies more comfortable or feel like they're like you know quote unquote seen Mm -hmm. and then i'll do it you know but like in turn like And for like the publicness of it, because I also, you know, and I've said this before, I don't know if on a podcast, but I have said it on the internet. It's like this idea that people are like, I'm doing the reading and I'm learning and blah, blah, blah. It's like, that doesn't matter. And because the truth be told, it's like those books have always existed. You've all like, no one is new to the fact that black people are treated worse in this country. No one is new to the fact that women are treated worse in this country. No one is new to the fact that homophobia and transphobia and, you know, Islamophobia exists. Like these are, we all know it's that you don't care. Like when, uh, those beautiful Patriots stormed the Capitol on January 6th, (laughs) you had all these people go online. There was a lot of black people too that were like imagine can you imagine if these were blm protesters instead of you know and it's like yes yes everyone can imagine that everyone knows what this is like stop that we're not at like i don't need woke talking points anymore i need you to create action because like none of that just like this idea of just you know like finger wagging and being like oh you guys got it's like yes everyone knows to get it together that if you don't think white supremacists know that they're being white supremacists you're crazy <laughs> like they're not like well, i can't figure out why i flew here from tulsa <laughs> like you know what i mean like they know they know so it's like even when i like speak online about things i'm trying not to just be like hey you know people change this it's like here's not only change the thing here's a link to a thing here is the reason why i'm even talking about this thing here is a reason that you should look past the surface of you know i hate to be like you know i hate to use this example but like young black man quote unquote commit suicide in a park in you know uh in uh north you know north of la And be like, oh, wait, three of these have happened in three weeks. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's Mm. what I want to. It's just not about like anytime I like talk about white people or anybody. It's usually even if it comes off harsh, it's usually done through a lens of humor because like there's also nothing cornier to me than like people, especially black people who like built actually not even especially black people, all people who built their like brand on like white people do this uh white people you do this white (laughs) people um and it's just like by the way it's like i my high school was like nothing but white people and like 50 black people you know what i'm saying Hmm. and we were friends and we kicked it but it's like i have white homies like you know what i'm saying like and i'm not gonna pretend that like you know like Of course, they're problematic, too. They're white. But, like, in in the same way that I'm problematic because I'm a man. You know what I mean? Like, so, but it's like, are we going to learn? Are we going to push forward? Are we going to, you know what I mean? Like, and this isn't, like, an apology, being an apologist to anybody. But it is, like, this thing of, like, people know what they're doing, A. If they don't, then I, it's not my job to educate them beyond something that i've learned Mm. that i think is actually a useful resource versus again it's like the canceling thing where it's just like we're just you know like if we're just gonna yell at folks and not to say that like you don't need to or that you know that uh respectability politics of it all just like keep your head down and blah 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 i'm not saying do that either i'm saying that like 
if you have something to say, make sure it's worthwhile and it's not the one of 30 things that have been screamed in this echo chamber over and over and over again. And like when I am saying one of those 30 things that have been said over and over and over again, I'm making fun of it. Yeah. You know, 100% of the time. Like I just, you know, so. Well, and so. Th- that's why I think you're such a great comedian because, um, I mean, I, I'm, I don't know if you've ever followed like Cavett, Dick Cavett or Richard Pryor, or any of those stuff. Like it reminds me a lot of some of the late Pryor stuff in the sense that there's a, there's a humility that's in, that's in your comedy and which like, I don't see you as a comedian who goes up there and has material like, okay, I'm going to prove myself. Was it funny? Can I go to the next level? Like there's a confidence in your comedy that also um, is very thought provoking and uh, but but yet like really, really funny. Like I've, I've watched some, you know, I've watched a bunch of your things here and there and was like, oh, shit, this is good. This is like, you know, just it, it's 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 not like, don't you find it funny that airplanes do, you know, I mean, <laughs> you, you, <laughs> you, you listen to it and, and it. You know, I, it's it's definitely caused me to think about some stuff more, um, but also because I was laughing about it when I first heard it in a weird way, like my defenses were lowered. And that, right, yeah, you have such you a know, great yeah delivery with that. Well, that's the hope, you know, and like even like over the summer when like things were at like their height, I was like, what's the funniest way to like. You know, like, because again, like, I race stuff to a point just becomes boring to me, truly. Mm-hmm. Um, because again, it's like we all know, we all know. <laughs> but I was like, would it be funny? And I like had to run it past my brother, but I was like, here's like four jokes. So, because we also did it on our podcast, and not that we're not like plugging the podcast, but please go me for and it. Him on our podcast, it the notes. like, oh, yeah, well, we have a podcast called My Brother Sneaker, but like we were trying to do a bigger thing and it was like a part of this, like part of my new stage jokes and blah, blah, blah. But we were like, you know, everyone's saying how like white men are a problem. And so we like did an episode called the white male problem. But the joke of it was we can't, it's so hard to pick our favorite white man. So like, (laughs) we just like deconstructed like our favorite five like white dudes. So it was like David Beckham, Tony Hawk. (laughs) Like it's just like praising dudes. But like that all came from like we were like, you know, because I was discussing with him. I was just like, I don't like I'm so sick of like the same 12 talking points. And it's like I, you know, like I did like have a few speaking engagements over the summer where I was just like, I'm not just here to be like, you know, Black Lives Matter, which yes, clearly, but like, what is the actual transformation look like? What is, what are, you know, and I like laid things out. I was like, here's an, here's a few steps towards economic equality that people could actually take. You know what I'm saying? Here's some, here's some, uh, things for, uh, uh, you know, a- adoption and or foster parents that would actually make an impact in, you know, black and brown children's lives. Like, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, I'm not just there to be like, we gotta, you know, rise up. It's like, yes, but it's like, how, how, how are we going to do that? If literally no one's ever telling you how to do it, you know what I'm saying? Like, Mm -hmm. and, and not to say that, like, that's, it's, it's no one's responsibility, but the person that wants to make things change. But at the same time, like, you know, if you're the same rah, 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 sis, boom, bah, it gets kind of boring. Now, that being said about the comedy part of it, I was like, what's the funny or to me, what's a funny way to deconstruct all the stuff people can talk about? It's like, let's point out all the dope things white people do and then make fun of them. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it's like to me, even like, you know, this is the bad version, but it's like even like the Smash Mouth thing earlier. It's like, you know, that's not an attack. It's just like. You That's guys, true. because the truth of the matter is like you guys loved Smash Mouth for a very long time. <laughs> and like, <laughs> Guilty. and now it's like, it's so crazy to like hate on them, I think. You know what I mean? Like, again, like, especially like the closest thing they've done is what they had a, they had a Corona concert, if I remember correctly, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So that's like a reason to be like, okay, they are stupid. But like, <laughs> but for the most part, before that, like, people were just like, they're 
idiot. I'm like, but they're not idiots. Like they were just like a fun time band. Like I don't even know how to categorize them. Actually, the more I think about it, I'm like, what what is that music? It was it's it was single serving um, like happiness. You you listen okay. to it, it gets stuck in your head. It's slight a bit of an earworm, but they're. Who is it? I listened to like a, a comedy podcast and basically it might have even been Comedy Bang Bang, but one of the like characters on there basically only spoke in Smash Mouth lyrics. Uh, and it was just, yeah, I mean, it was like, oh, yeah, this fits because the lyrics are basically uh, apply to anything and everything. Um, right. You know, and they're, 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 there's no substance into them. You're, you're not going to hear Dylan, you know, Dylan asks, you know, explanations of economic you know whatever it's smash mouth is just single serving happiness and you move on oh but don't oh uh, that's interesting because i will say that like if you take the lyrics to all star right okay like i feel like they speak to a more general philosophy than a specific one right like it's just like be confident like you know time time runs out for everyone like do your thing be happy like I, I th- you know, like only shooting stars break the mold. That's what I'm saying. Like that's <laughs> if here's the thing. Like I think if an athlete said that, people would be like, "Whoa!" You know what I mean? But it's the guy from Smash Mouth. So I was like, "This is <laughs> stupid." <laughs> like, um, but yeah. So anyway, like to the original point, like I, I say all that to say that, like, yeah, I just like also and uh, again, like. This isn't me. Like, I just feel like I've like come on here and being like woke people are nonsense. But like, you know, there's like all these tweets I just keep seeing where it's just like joy is a form of resistance and this and that. And it's just like, then just be joyful. You don't have to say it like and that's my point. It's just like whenever a lot of times when everyone was like being super serious about all that stuff, like I wasn't making fun of it. I was making jokes, though. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. it's just like, yeah. dude, what what else am I supposed to do? Like, I've done, I've, you know, I've been organizing, I've been given money, I've, you know, like, and, you know, like, not that people were here familiar, but I, like, did online campaigns where I got, like, white people to shave their eyebrows in solidarity, and I, like, bought a cameo from Rachel Dolezal and raised $5,000 to, like release it to the public and like you know what i mean like it's like there's also and i'm not calling myself an anarchist because i'm not a cornball but like there is a level of recklessness to be had when doing these things because that's sometimes all people understand is like a whoa and like you know fake jersey mike's memes and like yeah that was like fucking unbelievable (laughs) and but you know what i'm saying It's, it's like it does it does work you know in terms of like you don't have to be a screaming you know whatever on twitter and you can do other things too well i mean i would argue that action yeah i mean and i would argue that it works better because the the under everyone's more or less understanding of a comedian right is that Oh, you're supposed to make me laugh. You're going to say something that's going to, that it will be funny. But when right. you start saying things that are funny in a different level, in a different perspective, but are true and are things to be examined, it's it's so much different than any journalist or any Anderson Cooper, any type person who is basically, you know, speaking or, or even, you know, preaching, right? Like, it's just... Well, it's, I, I mean, yeah. it's, it's only because comedy by very nature you think you're listening to an idiot right even the smartest comic like by very nature of laughing you're like this person's an idiot right so like it would be like if you saw david blaine do like an an amazing magic trick and you're like yeah that's cool because he's a magician but then like he dunked a basketball you'd be like whoa (laughs) like that's what it's like when a computer (laughs) makes or that's what it's like when a comedian makes a i said computer though so weird uh that's what it's like when a comedian makes a valid point it really like that's the greatest thing is that you just thought you were talking to an idiot and then you're like oh my god they have a brain 
much like oh, you shit. don't expect a magician to be an athlete. Yeah. Um, damn. Um, like, what brands have you been buying lately, buying or wearing, that you like see and you're like, okay, I fuck with that? Um, I think I was saying this earlier, but like, of like kind of kind of foregoing designers and I'm getting into just like I'm just all about like my truck lifestyle right now like building things driving over rocks like so I've gotten what I'm kind of truck like, you got can you flex oh yeah yeah I have a 2020 uh Ford F-150 XLT it's a dark Ooh. dark blue slash blue jeans color chrome grill chrome wheels chrome side and you steps. and Jonah Hill does he have a truck now? I think he, yeah, I think he has a Raptor. Oh, okay. yeah, good for him. yeah, they're tight. But everyone's um, going F one fifties. Well, I mean, they're they're the number one sold vehicle in the United States. So it's like you really? either have, yeah, it's either you have an F one fifty or you just have a different car. <laughs> um, <laughs> Damn, I didn't even know that. Yeah, I know. Uh, I know Marshmallow has a Raptor. Um, I just like the thing is like truthfully like I could have, and I'm not even saying that as a flex, but it's like I'm in LA and I'm genuinely i don't think you should have those trucks unless you are actually going to use them like you know what i mean yeah. like it feels kind of unless like, you're hitting a big bear yeah <laughs> like and well like and like driving into like a lake like it's like otherwise <laughs> what do you you know what i'm saying like it's a flex for sure but it's like it's also like when people have like a lambo and like you know stop and go traffic you're like that's not what the thing was made yeah. for you know and also corvettes are faster I digress. Uh, Whoa! Okay. I have I have an F one fifty. I love it. But it you've been into the need. yeah. So I just into been, the new sort of like outdoorsman. Well, it's not even Mr. Fix It. Yeah, it's more just like a return to roots, you know? Because like I'm from Georgia, and that's just what people. It's like everyone had trucks. Everyone built their own stuff. Like you know what I mean? Like. And I, I'm from Marietta, so it's not like I wasn't in like the woods woods, you know what I'm saying? But enough that like, you know, my home, like literally talking to my friend Jay, who's one of my friends from back home. It's like he builds all of his own stuff. Like he builds the 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 camper that it attaches to the top of his Land Rover. Like, you know what I'm saying? Or uh, sorry, Land Cruiser, the uh, the Toyota one. Like, Toyota, yeah. Um, he builds like if he like you know he's like i want like a little sauna thing for like his house and he built it like you know what i mean like that that's that's who i'm friends with and like that's who i came up with like people it's like even like people who like we like skated growing up and like they built their own mini ramps and like you know what i'm saying so it's just like i'm Mm -hmm. like you know I, i think the pandemic did kind of show that like oh, like I miss all that stuff. I miss like the idea of being able to do things by my own and not just like order something, order something, order something where it's like, that's the reflex now. And like, but I also like before all this taught my, or not taught myself, I like learned to sew because I was like, I want to be able to, if I want clothes, I want to be able to make them as opposed to just buying stuff all the time. And that's just kind of how I am with everything. Like I just, I'd rather learn it than just constantly. Like, I'm not going to sit here and be like, I can make, you know, the best fitting pair of jeans you've ever had. But like, if I need to, I can, yeah, I can like, but it's like, I can like, sew a shirt. I can like, you know, if I do need to make a simple pair of pants, I can do it. Like, you know what I mean? And like, well, um, very simple. But my, but my point being is that like, People used to gradually fall into an identity, right? We used to be like, I'm like an outcast. And so like I've like hung out with a bunch of outcasts and this is my group, right? Like for me, it was like skate punk rock kids. Yeah, punk yeah. rock, whatever it is, right? Or it went the opposite. It was just like, I kind of feel weird, but I'm good at basketball and then like you end up playing basketball and the basketball players become your homies you know Mm -hmm. um when i say homies gender neutral for anyone listening um but now it's like this weird like i was i was watching this billy eilish documentary oh the apple tv one i watched it last night and it's like this whole thing where it's just like you know her and she's like wearing chains and has gray hair and color contacts like i'm a weirdo and then like (laughs) 
they also showed like oh like the year before she did all that she was like a phenomenal like ballet dancer and was like blonde haired like flowing in the wind dancing and i was like oh this is the new thing because of the internet you can literally choose your identity on the spot then you have access to all the clothes of that identity because of the internet you have access to all the music it's like there's no not just curating anymore like curating isn't the right word but it also is like the closest thing i can think of it's just that there's just you can immediately fall into who you think you are or want to be or should be or or just interested by because you know like and granted she you know and this this isn't like a bash billy eilish thing at all but it's like she ended up hurting her leg so she couldn't dance anymore and so she's like focused yeah. more on music and blah 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 so i'm like okay maybe it was more natural more natural progression than i would imagine but it's also she's what 17 or 18 so it's like it had to have happened pretty quick you know yeah yeah um but my point being is like that's it with everyone it's like who i was mentioning earlier to you um yeah. it's just like people just have chosen these things you know even like you see these guys like on TikTok who are just like, like, excuse me, like, you know, clothes horses or like, you know, streetwear kings or like all these people who it's just like, dude, you just know that interesting people wear a cactus plant flea market and that's why you're wearing it. You aren't <laughs> interesting though. You know what I mean? Like there's a big difference. Like, yes, yes. You know, I, and, I know I keep talking about them, but I mean, like my brother years ago was like, this is a weird little label. You should like check them out. And like, I would miss their drop, the the cactus plant people. And I would like miss mm-hmm. their drops and stuff. But I was like, oh, wow. Like I'm like trying to like, the fact that I couldn't like wrap my head around it I, meant to me that I knew they were doing something cool. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But it's like by very nature of who my brother is and the way he interacts with clothes and what they mean to him and stuff it's like he is interesting because he knows he's not just wearing it to wear he knows the art of it he knows the history of it he knows how to wear his own clothes like you know what i'm saying like yeah there's a difference between like there's a difference between just like being stylish but knowing the meaning of what style is and like that's i feel like everyone right now is like everyone is just on this mission to like be stylish and it's like okay sure but like you know i it, you can still buy all your clothes from kith and look like an idiot you know what i'm saying like i can tell it's like <laughs> It's like all the nerds who just figured out that they could wear Yeezys and all of a sudden be part of a circle. You know what I'm saying? And part of a clique. And it's like, no, like I still see you for the dork that you are, you know? Yeah. So there's a, my, my friend calls it like, there's a difference of like emotional dressing and analytical dressing into which there's, you know, like people dress a certain way to, try to communicate about themselves, right? It's a great form of self-expression, but also at the same time, um, when people say like about style, right? Like style is, is, is doing the best with what you have and evolving yourself like individually and, and physically with, with what you're doing, you know, right. versus if you just buy things, that's not necessarily style. That's consumerism, you know, with, with, cotton and wool like right. it's just it doesn't it doesn't really communicate what you can do or how you can express yourself with what you have it's just acquiring more right um bruce boyer who's like a phenomenal he was he's basically like the first like menswear writer has talked about that a lot too in the sense that he's just like you don't need to have this much clothes or be buying this many clothes over and over again like you can still find a way to express yourself differently with that same pair of jeans or that right. same shirt. And he's like, people will respect you more versus like, Hey, I have money. Now I look like this. Hey, right. I have some money. Now I look like this. It's like, what the fuck? Absolutely. That is absolutely right. And like, that's how I feel about most everyone right now. I'm just like, <laughs> I just like, like, yes, everyone has the same outfit. Great. Everyone has that hoodie. Great. Like, and like, you know, for good and for bad, like the internet has made 
making anything so much easier, right? You could make a short film easier. You could just, Mm -hmm. things are just easier to make, including like the idea of like launching a label, a clothing label. Mm -hmm. Now it's like the, the idea of like, you know, uh, the idea or the, the mystery of like screen printing and like, you know, buying a bunch of Gildan shirts and all that stuff is like kind of gone. Like you can just <laughs> YouTube, you know, how to start a clothing company. And someone's like, you buy these sweatpants, you buy <laughs> these hoodies. Yeah, put these logos on. Yeah, it. yeah. Here's a Shopify store. Right, exactly. Go with God. You know? Yeah. <laughs> so like, so that's like good if like, you know, I hope there are people and I think there are people out there who are still doing very interesting things, you know, but like mm-hmm. there's also just like, you just see all of these companies and you're like, what are you doing? Like none of this even, it's like, it doesn't make sense. It's like, you know, faux early two thousands, like blade runner and or Sega font, you know, that's like hitting the nostalgia of it with just like a slogan that means nothing where it's just like, you know, cake on Tuesdays, you know, like, or whatever. And you're like, okay, like, sure. Cake Cake on on Tuesdays. Tuesdays. Like, you know, like, it's just like, what are we doing that? And I think that like this tie dye movement needs to die so hardcore. It's driving me insane. Oh, okay. Go off. What's here. It's, it's it's, tie dye. I mean, by very nature, started as a fully countercultural, you know, response to everything you've talked about, to like consumerism, to this idea that you had to be like a button up straight lace like banker that you had to wear a suit to get on an airplane. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I mean? Like all that stuff. And it's like, no, I literally took a white shirt and I just made it <laughs> a bunch of colors. It looks like my acid trip. Like, that's what it is. And then, it, you know, had a graphic of like, you know an independent bookstore or some slogan about how Jesus was a rebel or, you know what I'm saying? Like that's what it was or like a band or whatever. And now it's like, you know, the house of LVMH presents tie dye. And it's like, (laughs) all right, well, it feels like that's nailed it. The opposite of what it is. You know what I mean? And so like, and again, like, I also just think it's on top of everything else. I think it's lazy in terms of what these, it's like you have access to all these things and now you're just, you know, ripping off what a bunch of people did who honestly could never afford your clothes and would have hated you. Like your chart, you know what I mean? Like that's that, that, you know, like, I don't know. It's also like the thing a few years ago when everyone was doing like, uh, they were trying to, uh, you know, kind of copy a easy aesthetic and we'll just buy like a black sweatsuit and throw bleach all over it and kind of just let mm-hmm. the bleach sit. You know what I mean? So anyway, yeah. yeah. Buy an old Carhartt and, or oversized sweatshirts, cutting yeah. off sleeves and yeah. collars. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yep. So that's it. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's that's pretty dead on. Um, what's the what's the best thing you bought in quarantine and the worst thing you bought in quarantine? truck (laughs) Uh, then uh i actually and i still love them the problem is that i just can't do anything with them is that they're uh the yeezy quantum basketball shoes oh i got the blue ones which i love but i hate them because like they're literally just sitting there and like And not even, like, to go for a walk are they cool because there's also no one outside. So, like, they're actually, like, they're, like, building resentment. (laughs) Um, Do you watch Real Housewives of Salt Lake City at all? Uh, Not of Salt Lake City, but I'm familiar. So, on there, there's a kid who, like, started his own clothing company called Brooks Marks. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, fuck. I'm so glad you mentioned that. Yeah, because I saw... I mean, it's they're sweatsuits, they're, right? With just the red tape. Yes. Yeah. And like, they're beyond just sweatsuits in the sense that they are, it's just felt that has just been sewn together. Like, it's like craft store felt that someone put sleeves on. And like, for the joke of it, it's like so fine. Then I like made a fake commercial to go with it and blah, blah, blah. And then yeah. his sales actually went up and he won't fake me, which is crazy crazy but i digress that's by far 
like it's again it's the thing i'm talking about with like launching a clothing company it's like yeah like back in the day i could be wrong but i felt like unless you were just like a pure streetwear company where people knew like you're just screen printing a graphic onto a t-shirt and you were like i'm making designer sweatsuits people would be like okay they even like juicy couture right like those were still comfortable and nice right you know a nice velour but now it's just like you just throw anything on anything from like some warehouse you you know bought from in china or like you know you bought 700 sweatsuits off alibaba (laughs) you know and like (laughs) You're just selling them, and that's what this is. It's amazing how like people are just like taking whatever dumb thing, making a stupid like ad for it in Photoshop, and drop shipping from China. Especially watch brands. Like I'm a huge oh, watch nerd, yeah. but all these watch brands are so trash, buddy. It's, and it's like it's yeah. like because they don't have to do anything now other than like gold plate something for twelve bucks. And then yeah. add a fake bad brown leather band, a completely white face with no numbers, you know, two cheap hands. But it's like they're so, it, it, you know, like everything for good. And, I'll, you know, like I number one, I'm not going to use the term disrupt because like kill me. <laughs> but <laughs> the company that kind of I, I feel like in modern history that has revolutionized so much of like what elevated elevated cheaper products can be is warby parker like warby parker and i I mean that for good and for bad like they really they they were like affordable yeah they were like hey you can have something that looks phenomenal and is mostly good quality like they're not bad glasses at all Mm -hmm. and we'll do everything online for you take a picture with a credit card yeah you know what i mean like they do it all and then everyone took that and was just like, I will do it to something that isn't as important as glasses, but feels as important as glass, right? Because yeah. like you do have the glasses, so you want the watch. You do have the watch, so you want the nice cufflinks. You do have the nice cufflinks, so you want the good jacket. Like, you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. they really, you know, and now it's just like, I I forget the name of the company, but they're always served on my Instagram. They're just like, take a picture of your body name three colors you like and we'll like mail you a suit and i'm like yeah what <laughs> like, yeah. This feels, and it's Revolutionized like revolutionized body scan yeah it's like the idea like the commercial is like a guy like playing basketball in a suit and i'm like i this is impossible this is like unless the technology you're using is like a deep fake like body scanning like you're saying like this is you're not going to mail me a suit based off of like what i told you i feel like <laughs> like you know what yeah. i mean like it's so <laughs> crazy but like again i think it's like a it's a you know a symptom of the warby parker uh cuz i mean they've they've been around for what almost 10 years now and like if mm-hmm. not longer and like you know, that business model really, cause it's like, they just started opening brick and mortars like a year and a half ago. So like, yeah, you know, that was, that was newer. It was all online. Yeah. first. It's in everyone that like listens to the show likes to joke about the brand untuck it. Yeah. Um, exactly. which is just like, you know, something where it's like, okay, our, our like motto is going to be just like how a couple people wear their shirts and but but that brand does fucking numbers, man. Well, here's my question because I actually <laughs> don't know anyone that wears them, and I well, want God bless to you. Know, well, I want I want to <laughs> talk to someone to be like, is it worth it? Like, do you actually feel more confident with your shirt untucked as an untuck it shirt than you do <laughs> a regular shirt that is untucked? Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> does it fit better? Is it a better quality? Like, it just drives me. No. It's, None of it is. It's also like they do that thing where they're like, and you know it's a real untuck it because we put our red triangle thing on the bottom. And it's like, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. I don't care. Um, but yeah, they're uh, they're the symptom again of like what feels like it's important that absolutely is not. Anyway, well, this has been a ton of fun. I'm sure you got lots of stuff to do and going on. I want to thank you so much for your time. But thank you so much. It was really good chatting. Doc, thank you. All right, later. 
You've been listening to Blamo. Our show is produced by Blamo Media. Our associate producer is Jason Schwimmer. Maddie Franklin is in your DMs, and Big Boy Friendin cuts it up. Theme music, as always, by the mysterious Breakmaster Cylinder. And if you want to find us online, type in the old Google, no, we don't make toys. You can find us on Instagram, at Blamo Podcast. And do us a favor, leave a review on whatever app you're listening to, right now, unless you're driving. If you can't stop and need all that hot content, join us on Patreon for tons of exclusive episodes, our private Slack group, merch hookups, and all the fun in the whole world. Just kidding. Not really. I'm Jeremy Kirkland. I love you all. See you soon.